subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Hello and welcome to Health Live at Seniors today. We are delighted to have here with us a multifaceted uh, uh, personality, of course a doctor, but who is also into various interesting things. I have great pleasure in introducing you to Dr. Bikram Mohanty. He's a leading heart surgeon, uh, specifically a senior consultant, cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon uh, for adult and pediatric uh, 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 ailments and a visiting consultant at the National Heart Institute in New Delhi. A little about uh, Dr. Bikram Keshri Mohanty. He's a cardiac surgeon of great repute with 27 years of experience in hardcore heart surgery. He has dealt with the most complicated cases and emerged successful. After graduating in medicine from Katak in Orisha, one of my favorite states in the country, he pursued his post-graduation from Sardarjang Hospital, University of Delhi. Thereafter, he specialized in cardiothoracic surgery from the National Heart Institute. He has done great work in pediatric and neonatal heart surgeries. He keeps himself afresh with the recent trends like keyhole heart surgery, robotic heart surgery, heart failure surgery, and heart and lung transplant. Apart from cardiac surgery, he is also an expert in thoracic as well as vascular and endovascular surgeries. Understandably, he is one of the rare adepts who handles both adult and pediatric cases with the precision of highest order. His efforts have earned him appreciation from all quarters, national and international forums alike. Dr. Mohanty also has the distinction of working with many stalwarts of cardiac surgery with worldwide fame, uh, with a large body of academic and literary works to his credit. He is deemed to be one of the foremost writers in the field of cardiac surgery and ancillary disciplines. Uh, now, this is, uh, this is a part of his profile which is of particular interest to me. Uh, Dr. Mohanty is equally about, passionate about his hobbies and interests. He got into acting in 1985 when he was in his first year of MBBS. He was a dramatic secretary of the college union and then became an anchor and an audition television actor. Did a plethora of telefilms, short films, teleserials, and public awareness TV commercials in various languages. He became a scriptwriter, producer, director, and was very active in the theater movement in Delhi. And the, the Delhi theater movement is supposed to be uh, uh, very well known and has produced some great stars. Uh, one of his achievements in this trade was to be involved in the Hollywood feature film Eat, Pray, Love, which starred Julia Roberts, no less, as a medical technical advisor. He also did a cameo in it. His latest venture in films is producing the English feature film Unfaithful, which has received a laurel at the, uh, at the 18th Cine Proper Film Festival in Mexico 2020, and it's also in the process of getting into many film festivals around the world. He also has a keen interest in singing. Presenting to you, Dr. Vikram Mohanty. Welcome, sir. How are you? Thank you very much, Mr. Pradiman, for the nice and I feel a little inflated, you know, you know profile of mine. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for that. At the outset, I must thank uh, uh, the, the, the Senior Student Magazine, uh, which has organized, which has been organized such, you know, beautiful, informative, health related programs without fail, like the heart beats regularly, it also does its work regularly every Saturday at 5 p.m. without fail. The heart may fail, but senior magazine, senior student, mag senior student magazine doesn't fail. That's the beauty of it. And good, e good evening, everyone. Thank to uh, Pradyumnan and thanks to everybody who has uh, joined in and who is going to join. And today, the uh, I mean, whatever uh, uh, introduction he uh, uh, told, I mean, he uh, probably the basic aim was today's discussion is aimed at, you know, uh, how to uh, get relief from heart ailments. I mean, specifically uh, coronary artery disease, blockages and heart attack and all that in, in which, you know, following a passion and relaxation plays play a major, very major role. So probably it uh, ignited him to, uh, you know, tell much about my other side of the profession. Anyway, thank you very much. So without any further ado, I would uh, like to jump into the to, uh, jump to today's discussion, which is uh, coronary heart disease, prevention and care. 
So in the first place, I, let me tell you what is coronary. I mean, heart is a pumping organ in, in our body. There are two adjectives for heart. One is coronary and the other is cardiac. So obviously cardiac sciences, cardiology, cardiac surgery, and all these things related to heart. Anything related to heart is cardiac. Similarly, coronary. So uh, let me tell you now, uh, I mean, uh, see, let me give you uh, an overview of uh, uh, about today's discussion. What has, you know, uh, spurred today's discussion is uh, because, you know, we have been seeing so many, uh, uh, so many personalities, so many people, uh, so many celebrities, you know, succumb to, you know, heart attack and eventually death uh, because of the lifestyle and because uh, of the very fact that, that they are not able to manage, uh, uh, could be they are not able to manage everything uh, which uh, they should manage. So see, heart is a pump. It's an organ which pumps blood throughout the body because we are living beings and every part of us, every tissue, every organ, every cell of ours is living and for survival, we need oxygen. So blood is nothing but a carrier. The way we trans, uh, use transport, like from our home to the office or to the workplace and back home. Similarly, blood is the carrier which carries oxygen from the heart to the tissues, which need oxygen for its survival, right? Similarly, heart itself is a living organ. So for its own survival, it needs oxygen. So heart is a muscular structure. It, it is made up of muscles. So the arteries or the, you know, the blood carrying pipes or tubes which carry oxygenated blood to the heart muscles are known as coronary arteries. So today we'll be discussing about coronary heart disease and how to prevent it and how to take care of that, right? So see, let me tell you what are the causes. Heart is a muscle. So inside the muscle, like a tree has a, a stem and branches and sub branches. So heart muscles are supplied by arteries, their branches and their sub branches and their sub sub branches, which reach every cell to deliver oxygen, right? So by any means, because of any reason, if there is a blockage to these arteries, the main artery or the branch arteries, which is very significant, like, you know, in our home, the, the water coming to our sink through a pipe, if something blocks that pipe, either completely or partially, obviously the water flow will be less, or if it is completely blocked, then there will be no water. Flow. Similarly, these arteries, when they carry blood, if they come across a blockage, a significant blockage, which is of importance, then obviously blood supply to that part will be hampered. And we, you know, feel some chest pain because the, the, the heart tissues and cells, the muscles, they are crying for oxygen, they're starving for oxygen. So there is a pain here. So that pain is known as angina. And if that blockage, if it is a significant one, it completely blocked because of some reason, or if there is a you know 60% blockage in that particular artery in the in the in the whole diameter of that artery, and a blood clot occludes that, so then the complete blood supply will be stopped to a particular region of the heart to where the that particular artery is supplying. So thereby causing the heart muscles, cells, and tissues to die. That is known as heart attack. Sir. So, so the main important thing here is the blockages in those coronary arteries. So what are the reasons of blockages in the coronary arteries? The reasons, reasons are many. There could be some, you know, organically things. There could be some non-organic things. Coming to the organic things, the most important thing is cholesterol. Everybody is aware of, of cholesterol. Every household, they know what cholesterol is. It's, somebody's cholesterol is high. So we have to take anti-cholesterol. So what is cholesterol? Cholesterol is nothing but a fat. A fat, when we eat some food rich in fat, what are the foods? Like meat, like eggs, 
like milk like milk products these are rich sources of fat so cholesterol is there in that food right the other thing is that these are external sources the internal sources our liver produce cholesterol cholesterol is not bad at all cholesterol are very much required for our body they are required for our cell membrane they are required for our nerve sheath they are re required for the production of sex hormones they are required for many bodily functions phys very many bodily uh, physiology so cholesterol is a part and parcel of our life it is very much essential but as you know anything and everything in excess so if the cholesterol level is more than the desired level obviously they will be get they will be deposited everywhere especially in the arteries of the body the peripheral arteries and the arteries of the heart that is a coronary arteries thereby causing block right <clears throat> so what are the things which increases the level of cholesterol in the blood they are stress so that is the reason why we we very much discuss about stress every time there is a problem with the heart we want to you know either get a cure from it or either to or or to prevent it right so stress addictions to you know beverages like uh, uh, the beverages which are rich in caffeine like tea and coffee and excessive use of alcohol and you know smoking smoking is a, is very dangerous to coronary arteries they causes block right and similarly obesity like if you are too fatty right and diseases like diabetes mellitus kidney disease thyroid disease pancreatic disease all these things they are per se dangerous dangerous to the heart and also they increase the cholesterol level which is very much important uh, important uh, which is a very much important factor for blockages in the heart or coronary arteries like apart from that because cholesterol they get, they go they get deposited inside the atrial wall thereby you know blocking the the passage of blood similarly blood pressure high blood pressure is a is a is a causative agent for this coronary artery disease how see what is blood pressure blood pressure means the heart is pumping blood so it goes to the arteries to be carried out to the peripheries the artery is a elastic structure when the heart pumps the blood comes out of the heart and the arteries they get you know inflated they get distended right and blood flow so with aging and with you know this cholesterol deposits and other deposits they become rigid so when heart pumps so that exist a pressure which is very high they they are not il that elastic then in case of you know in in normally uh, some old age uh, old age people and also if there is a blockage right so then what happens that then heart has to work more for that to overcome that resistance if on a plain road we are driving a car it will be very smooth if the road is you know very it's very rough obviously the speed will will will, will uh, you know decrease and we have to adjust more pressure we have to change the gear and all that so the heart has to adjust more pressure to overcome that you know that rigidity so thereby injuring the atrial inside wall of the arteries everywhere and for that matter in the heart arteries also so whenever there is a injury there is a chance of blood clot formation so if there is a blockage and because of blood pressure there is an injury to the arterial wall inside wall of the arteries and a blood clot is formed so there will be a complete blockage that will lead to more angina and heart attack right similarly nicotine in any form that will be tobacco chewing or uh, you know bd or cigarette smoking or hookah smoking whatever it is what they cause they cause endothelial damage smoking Con, you know the smoke tobacco smoke contains lots of ingredients which are very dangerous they go inside the arterial wall and damage them right in the first place then there is a component of blood which is you call you know platelets you might, you might be heard about it platelets that goes de that decreases during dengue and other fevers so this platelets they are responsible for clot formation so smoking what does it do it damages the platelets 
so thereby there is a you know tendency of the platelets to get accumulated to clog the you know the arterial wall so endothelial damage in the damage of the inside wall of the artery platelet damage there be platelet getting aggravated and smoking you know religious stress hormones there are stress hormones in our body like adrenaline cortisol all these things what they do they constrict the heart arteries constriction means they make it narrow right similarly smoking the smoke contains carbon monoxide carbon monoxide is a poison you have heard about oxygen we are taking we have about you have heard about carbon dioxide which we are exhaling but carbon monoxide is ingredient in the smoke which is very dangerous so carbon dioxide is like in a villain means oxygen if oxygen is a hero carbon dioxide is a villain and hemoglobin is the hero you know both fight for them so what does the carbon monoxide does the carbon monoxide reflexes because oxygen i told you blood is the carrier of oxygen to different parts of the body so hemoglobin in the blood is the thing which carries the oxygen so this carbon monoxide fight with the hemoglobin that replaces the hemoglobin and you know it, go, it goes and sits there so carbon monoxide the poison you know it circulates throughout the body so nicotine is very damaging from that point of view it causes damage to the arterial wall it causes platelets to get damaged and clogged inside the artery it releases stress hormones it has carbon monoxide poison right similar diet which are rich in salt because salt causes water retention whenever there is salt it will retain the water so any patient who is a hypertension that means having high blood pressure should take less salt so beyond the age when there is a you know physically the normal tendency of the blood pressure to be high one should take less salt right and obviously less fat and less sugar also because in if a patient diabetic less sugar should be taken and sugar sugar as such is it is high calorie high calorie foods are dangerous to the body and the heart right so these are the causes of blockages in the coronary artery for which we have angina and eventually you know heart attack and death they are i i just want to repeat them they are cholesterol you know cholesterol high blood pressure nicotine you know addiction bad diet habit so then what is the solution for it i mean we we have been uh, you know uh, listening to one uh, quotation like you know prevention is always better than cure so it's better to prevent them in the first place right and what get to uh, to be taken so our our food habits should be you know low fat low fat vegetarian diet low fat because the low cholesterol is there and vegetarian diet they contain low cholesterol also like right. and oil which oil we should use the oil which are rich in unsaturated fat because saturated fat is very bad okay so like olive oil is a good thing to take and what kind of carbon we uh, carb, uh, carbohydrate we should take we should take complex carbohydrate you must have heard about you know we go to the you know shop and ask for you know do you have multi grain uh, bread we don't go for you know normal bread nowadays because they are good right and then what else exercise exercise is very very important so in the care of prevention if we want to prevent heart disease we to prevent to all the to prevent and you know make a stop to all the causes which give rise to the, you know coronary artery blockage so there are good food habits like low and low fat vegetarian food and air exercise exercise is very important why i, I don't know why people do, don't do exercise we take a bath we sleep we eat we don't exercise exercise is physiologically it is it is it has to be done right so aerobic exercise what is aerobic exercise aerobic exercise is where oxygen is used to go to the gym we you know you, we we lift the dumbbell and these are exercise for your 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 body your external body muscles aerobic exercise are where in oxygen is used there those are walking cycling swimming jogging all this 
So how we should, you know, work, work is, working is the best exercise for that matter. No time restriction is there, no cost is involved. You can work at your convenience, you can, you can work, work at your place, but there are some, there are some rules to it. I mean, I mean, many people, they do work, but they don't lose it. They don't, they don't feel good. Why? Because there is a way to it. We, sh we should, we all should, we all should, you know, uh, follow a regime which is called as fit regime, F-I-T-T, F-I-T-T. The frequency of exercise, the intensity of exercise, the time of exercise, and the type of exercise. So aerobic exercise, whichever is better for you, you do that. If you work, then work in a proper manner. At least, you know, start from, you know, 25 to 30 minutes, go up to one hour. That is very cardio uh, help, uh, helpful for your heart. When you work, you should take deep breaths. When you work, your step should be that. It should not be like, you know, it's a fun work or it's a it's a joy work even fun work and joy work are good because you know that gets uh, uh, that gives you a sense of you know happiness so by there by releasing the happy hormones having said that if you are doing it for entirely cardiac purpose then the, the work should be proper you should work like the every step of your should, should be at least two feet then your hand should be quite you know if you are if your left leg is in front then your right hand should be, you know, in front with the same speed, with, with the same speed, right? You should go on working like that. Initially, you should, you know, work slow, then, you know, peak, uh, then you pick up a moderate to uh, um, a moderate speed and maybe, a, you know, a heavy speed. Then while retiring, you should, you know, come down on the speed. That's a period of relaxation. So before any exercise and working, you know, warm up exercise is very important. That gives you, you know, mobility and uh, uh, it causes less injury to your muscles and and, and ligaments and uh, joints, etc. Right. <clears throat> so uh, when you do exercise, so in the brain there is a you know brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is you know release that gives you know uh, good uh, growth. To your uh, well-being. Similarly, stress. Uh, uh, we should practice stress reduction and relaxation in any form, like you know, uh, yoga, meditation, whatever hobby you have. You pursue that. That will give you pleasure, thereby reducing your stress. We are in a world like stress has to be there. Work, workplace stress. Every every st uh, everywhere you go, stress will be there. So we shouldn't withdraw from stress. Stress. We have to face it and solve it, right? So, so these are the things, and weight weight reduction is very much important because uh, we, we, those who are obese they have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and high diabetes. Diabetes. So, so that is just consider stress as a teacher, not an enemy. That much I can say. I think then we should resume to the questioner session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mohanty, for this. Uh enlightening introduction. Those of you who have questions, please put them in the Q&A tab as always. If you put in your age and your gender, it will perhaps also help doctor in responding to questions better. Uh, doctor, as, as, as we uh, uh, wait for questions to come in, uh, there are a few questions which have already come in. I want to ask you about uh, uh, you know, the situation that has happened thanks to uh, COVID. Now there are people who have been complaining about uh, uh, about uh, some disturbances in their heartbeat, the ECG, uh, etc. Post COVID, they were absolutely fine earlier. They may have had some comorbidities, but has that? Do you see that problem in is is fairly grave now with all those people who have had COVID and who are sixty plus and who have had even minor comorbidities? Yes, 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 very much, very much right. Actually, see, COVID is a disease which, uh, you know, takes toll of every system of our body and mainly lungs and heart. So these are the two structures. First is lungs, then the heart, right? So obviously, this is a sequel of COVID, which is very much there. And uh, with most of the patients, they do have problems. But they do have, you know, what do you call that? Uh, irregular heartbeats and many problems so but these are going these are self-settling i mean unless otherwise the patient is facing a problem because of there is a problem inside the heart 
obviously uh, you know when the patient walks because of the uh, effect of covid on heart and on the lungs obviously he has he will be you know breathless that is quite understandable but unless otherwise it is too much problematic i think uh, uh, nothing to be worried about that because this is a sequel and yes you if you really face a, a problem in your day to day life as to it is really becoming difficult uh, then you must consult a doctor and thereby you know going for a cardiac checkup and maybe for a lung checkup and all that but this is a part and parcel of the uh, it's a complication it's after effect of covid and you do see the numbers having increased uh... yes yes very much very much very much especially those who are comorbid comorbid factors but even with uh, young people having no co other comorbid factors they do have these problems nowadays yeah right uh, doctor we have a few questions that have come in uh, so there's a question by mr narendra shah mm -hmm. he is 70 and he's had covid he now has a cough issue it's not exactly heart but mm -hmm. he's had a cough issue and mm -hmm. He was wondering if there's a solution to it. See, sir, uh, in the first place, I must ask you, uh, what type of cough is? Uh, is, it, is it a dry cough or a productive cough? So he hasn't mentioned that, but... Okay, uh, okay. so look, let me answer him. If it is dry cough, see, dry cough is always, most of the time, because of, you know, allergies. Right, and productive cough is because of, you know, infection. It could be... Uh, infection in the throat, it could be infection in the lung and all that, right? But I think if he has uh, the best way to tackle is if it is very problematic, then he should start with, you know, steam inhalation at least three to four times a day. Steam is plain steam, nothing but just, you know, hot water steam, that is it. Then he should if if it doesn't subside and uh, you know go on increasing and if it is troublesome for him he must consult a pulmonologist because you know see uh, he he had covid and now he has cough whether this cough is related to that covid or not see covid mein kya hota hai? COVID, in covid what happens is you know uh, it's mostly affects the lungs there could be affection the, of the lungs which are reversible after the covid covid which are irreversible. If the damage is too much and it is irreversible, so obviously one will have these problems. So for that, he has to undergo a few tests, at least a clinical ex examination and few tests, like basic tests like X-ray and all. Then only one will be able to, you know, uh, look at what problem he actually ha uh, is having. And by the time he does that, he should start with, you know, good stimulation, and all these things and avoid a, a little bit of cold and if he has you know um cough then you should go for any cough syrup so he says he has he has wet cough after yes. lunch and dinner wet cup wet cup uh, see wet cup again could be because of many things it could be because it it i think it is nothing to do with that covid at the moment because he had covid he got cured about it if there will be a lung affection he will have breathlessness and he will have cough, not productive cough. Productive cough could be because of many reasons. There are conditions like bronchiectasis, you know, there is conditions like lung infection, there will be conflict like throat infection. Uh, in, in chronic smokers, uh, they are, you know, the, there is a tendency for, you know, cough production and all that. I, I personally think there is no relation between this cough, I mean, the productive cough and the COVID uh, uh, he had. Right. So um, if it is troublesome for him, he should visit a pulmonologist yeah. uh, or a physician at least for that matter. Thank you, doctor. We have a question from Mr. Bharat Mehta, who is uh, 66 years old. He's had uh, an angioplasty in September 2020, family history of heart ailments. His question is, what is the lifespan of a stent implant in the body? What precaution is required to uh, stop further damage and uh, uh, when does a heart patient have to do ECG to get doctor's advice in future? Right. So actually, that's what I'm trying to say. Many people have the tendency of hypercholesteremia. That means high blood cholesterol level, which is familiar. 
and those population are one to five percent. So on at least ninety five percent patients, we are the culprit. We have created a situation where in the blood cholesterol level is high. See, we are we have burn healthy, and except for the thing that you know uh, decaying as you age. I mean, childhood is a beautiful uh, process, and aging is a beautiful process. So except for the fact that you know we're getting aged, so some decaying, we shouldn't you know die of any 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 disease because. Uh, especially heart disease so now that the, he has undergone uh, an angioplasty there is no such rule like when the stent will be blocked or uh, or it will be their life form if he has gone an angioplasty understandably he would have been gone for the best of the stents and all so sir actually now he has to there are instances the stents getting blocked in even less than one year time there are instances wherein the patient is carrying out a very, very normal life throughout his life, even for 20 or 25 years, right? So from, end, what, uh, from his end, what he can do is, he has to continue with that, you know, blood thinner medicines, which is aspirin. And it is, uh, if it is a recent one, that uh, angioplasty, then dual or triple and, um, blood thinners are given. Then he has to, control his diabetes, his high blood pressure, his high cholesterol, all these things, right? So I personally believe if he controls all these, see diabetes is a very notorious disease also, even if you do everything, I'm telling multiple tasks, but I strongly believe if he's doing well and religiously following the doctor's advice as in taking his medicines properly, taking care of his high blood pressure and diabetes and regular exercise, he would lead a normal life and the stent is not going to be blocked. Thank you, doctor. Uh, we have a few questions that have come in and I know uh, getting to almost uh, 5.45 when we are going to be it's time up. Uh, we have a question by uh, uh, Rakshat Marfatia who asks, I'm on BP and diabetes medication. And my doctor has prescribed me to take the medicines, particularly in the morning. But sometimes I forget to take it at that time. And when I remember, it may be the afternoon or evening. Is this okay or uh, to take it at any time? Or do we have to stick to one time and skip if we forget for that day? Okay. So what medicine he's talking about? He's talking about his blood pressure medicine or the diabetic medicine. That's right. Right. In the first place. In the second place, see, it's better to stick to the time. No doubt about it. But... See, in the morning time, the blood pressure is very high. If you, you know, there's a diurnal variation of blood pressure throughout the 24 hours, but the blood pressure would be high, highest between 9 to 10 a.m. It is a blood pressure medicine. Yes. So he has to take it in the morning. If he forgot, he has to take it. He has to take it. He shouldn't miss. Then there will be, you know, there won't be any balance. So if he forgets, then that's well. I mean, he should stick to it, but he should take it. Right. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from uh, uh, Rashmita Jena, who says, my dad, who is 84 years old, uh, has been off late complaining of left thigh pain. I took him to an orthopedic doctor who has checked him thoroughly and then directed to see a physician. And the physician suggested that he should go for a chest x-ray and said that sometimes it does happen due to water in the lungs and it might cause pain in the leg. Uh, so... Uh, Rashmita ji asks, Dr. Monty, can you suggest oh, sure, something? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, he's a diabetic and a high BP patient, does it? Yeah, yeah. Sir, actually, the, actually the, the pain in the leg, it has many reasons. I mean, see, uh, leg is a structure which has skin, which has muscle fat, which has muscle, which has bones, which has joints, which has ligaments and everything, right? So pain and nerves for that matter. So pain could be because of anything. Pain could be because of muscular pain, it could be a joint pain, it could be a ligament pain, it could be a nerve pain, it could be because of sciatica, it could be because of any, you know, you have a, a prolapsed discs in the, uh, in, the, in the lumbar region, in your, in your waist region and all these stuff. But having said, if the doctor has asked for a chest x-ray, see, basically chest x-ray will show you if the lungs are congested or not. So lungs congestion is because of, you know, 
heart failure many times heart failure doesn't mean that a complete heart failure it could be the beginning of heart failure so in that case there will be swelling in the legs which is known as you know scientifically edema right but if the pain is there that could not be because of any chest problem so he should if he has consulted consulted a orthopedician then he should consult a physician and a vascular surgeon for that matter so see actually to in today i mean the specialties and sub specialties has uh, they have become so many that uh, and everybody's knowledge is confined to you know it's it's very focused it's very what do you call that uh, that which vision you we call that uh, and a very focused vision so so you know you have to rule out each, each and everything he has consulted our physician he he has to go go to a vascular surgeon for that matter and a physician because you the physician you know uh, you know see the patient as a whole thank you uh, doctor we have a question from kt daganchi who says doctor does taking statin tablets since 20 years 5 mg affect the liver in the longer run uh, she is 71 and uh, her question is can i reduce the dosage to alternate days since the cholesterol is normal with the tablet is using cow ghee better than oil for cooking well we get to the oil thing there's another question but if the first question is can she reduce her statin tablets uh, from 5 mg and will, will it increase uh, will it impact five, her liver 5 mg i think is the lowest dose people are also taking 80 mg 40 generally what we prescribe is 10 and 20 the hardly any patient would be there who will be getting 5 so you know in a way if he says that you know his cholesterol is normal then he can maybe try it for you know you know uh, for two weeks or maybe fortnight or or a month and you know repeat his you know lipid profile then go for it but 5 m m g is not going to damage and if at all it would done something that will be reflected in his liver function test so he should you know also go for his liver function test as to so as to know whether the liver is getting affected or not right thank you uh, doctor we have a few questions about which oil is the best for the heart is it groundnut oil sunflower oil rice bran oil cotton seed oil uh, and what quantity has to be taken and there was this question about ghee as well uh what kind of ghee should one take you know there are these uh, uh special premium ghees that are available these days uh ghee cow and e2 etc so what is what is your uh, uh uh recommendation see basically sir as i told i mean ghee is is a fatty substance which contains cholesterol and cholesterol is very much uh integral part which need for our body and uh, the amount of fat which we should take should be you know 14 grams a day right in the first place so uh, uh, and 40 grams a day means a uh, teaspoon of you know ghee is 14 percent 14 grams for that matter so but that's not the only thing which you are taking you are taking so many stuff i mean if you calculate then it would be more right so i think the best thing would be to take as much as less fat and as much as less oil one can take and so long as oil is concerned it has to be a, you know you should keep on changing your oil see olive oil few drops if you go for your cooking every day that's the best thing but we all indians especially are very you know very taste conscious so uh, keep on changing your oil every day see we have to leak we uh, uh, sunflower oil, oil is no doubt it's good olive oil is no doubt it's good so i think i would recommend these two oils if you go for olive oil every day you can take it otherwise change the oil in between but uh, groundnut and all these oils they contain more fat as compared to sunflower oil. doctor this is a festive season you know you are from uh, you yeah. are based in delhi you are from east india this is a time for puja etc you know i'm i'm sure a lot of mustard i oil. like the way you 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 know you pronounce the word pujo i am not from bengal but bengalis they do pronounce it as pujo we right. do we 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 pronounce it as puja but i like it the way you do so anyway, pujo and pujo well, yeah well you know this is the season when you have a lot of mustard oil being used 
a lot of oil and a lot of ghee, etc., which is being used. So, how does uh, you know the Mohanty uh, household uh, manage uh, the festive <laughs> season? What is your uh, what is your uh, personal advice to? Uh, Achha, I, I would like to I I would like to joke a crack I would crack a joke here. I mean, uh, doctors they always say, you know, do whatever we say, don't do whatever you do." <laughs> Like, you know, every household has its own story. But having said that, I mean, um, see, everything should be taken in moderation. See, we people are very, uh, you know, culturally driven, uh, according to our heritage, we should, you know, observe, celebrate each and every festival. But a diabetic patient is there, he shouldn't, if he's, you know, not allowed to take sweet, uh, then he shouldn't. So what I mean to say is anything and everything in moderation, what I believe is good, and especially for the people who are in, in the older age group, older as in beyond 40 and or maybe in the recent 40, and those who are have, having comorbid factors, they should be very careful for that. Anything else you ask? I maybe forgot. I have forgotten your question. So just this question, uh, Doctor, there are a few more questions that have come in and they are all from uh, uh, seniors, uh, uh, Mr. Shankar Chavan, who's 83, he says, I regularly do yoga and little exercise as advised by doctor. I'm also consuming uh, regularly EcoSpin, 150 uh, daily, one tablet, any side effects, any substitute medicine after food, even if I walk, I experience angina pain, any remedy for that? Okay, okay, okay. Sir, to rule out anjana pain, one has to go for investigations. We can't tell that, but if he's taking, see, basically beyond the age of 70 or 75, we prescribe ecosprint 75 milligram for day, but the question here is he has angina as for him. See, angina is a pain which uh, will go on increasing if, uh, if, if he continues to work. Suppose he's, he starts working and he's feeling, you know, chest pain, whether he takes rest, rest or he continues to work, and if he takes it, rest, if it is relieved, or if he continues to work, it gets increased. So all these things we must know, but having said that, Ecosprin is a very safe drug. The only thing that it is a blood thinner, if you sustain any injury, though you have a tendency to bleed for a more, you know, for, for prolonged time for that matter. And in that case, you press it, anything, by pressure, any bleeding by pressure will stop. So I think he should take, uh, continue to take Ecosprin 150 because he has angina. Otherwise, I would have prescribed him 75, the half dose. The, the, the best thing for uh, for people who have specific uh, health conditions is, of course, to uh, speak to the doctor. Uh, you know, one can also, of course, consult Dr. Mohanty on uh, in, a, in, a, in a teleconsult mode. Uh, but uh, we have two more questions, Doctor. One is from Colonel Dugal. He's 78. Angioplasty was done 15 years back, and he's taking all his medicines regularly. Uh, his his question is, what should be his action to check the heart condition and frequency as prevention? Sir, all the blood tests. If he's a uh, diabetic, obviously blood sugar. If it is hypertension, then he should have a check on his blood pressure. Then he should uh, undergo, you know, uh, ECG and echocardiography. Uh, at least yearly, at least yearly. And if he has symptoms like, uh, you know, uh, chest pain, even as uh, now, then he should go for maybe, you know, that's a test called stress ECG, which is known as TMT, treadmill test. And at the age of 83, he might not be able to do that. Then that's a called, uh, test called stress echocardiography. So uh, echocardiography to start with non-invasive tests like X-ray, ECG, echocardiography, blood tests pertaining to his lipid profile, and which I mean cholesterol and all these stuff, and diabetic profile, and also the kidney profile. We should have a check on that. Uh, doctor, is gingerly oil good? Madhu A asks in South Gin India, uh, gingerly oil. I yes. gingerly oil is actually I'm sorry I don't have any idea about gingerly oil. What exactly is it uh, English? Well, it is it's used a lot in South India, so <clears throat> you know, we would. It is uh, made. It is made from which? Uh, what seed or what? Uh, well, we'll we'll you know, it's it's okay. It's not really necessary to answer this question, but 
Uh, I think she should be answered not at the moment at least, but it is a query of her. But I am unable to answer this because I myself don't doesn't know. I don't know what Jinjali is. Right. Uh, so we have another question from Snehal. She uh, is sixty five years old and uh, uh, had undergone angioplasty last year post COVID. Has disturbance in the sleep. Whether it affects BP and also has started problems of burping. Is it because of medicines? Huh, burping could be because of medicines. It could be because of acidity, which is induced by the medicine, or it could be, you know, per se, and, you know, hyperacidity situation in her stomach in the first place. Then so long as BP is concerned, high blood pressure can give disturbance sleep. And disturbance sleep, if she has, can also give rise to uh, poor control of his high, high blood pressure. So it is vice versa. It is it's a cycle. Yeah. Uh, Doctor, I think gingerly oil, I, I just reconfirmed, it is yeah. uh, uh, sesame seed oil. So till oh. uh -huh. uh, I mean, it can be used, yeah. But it should, it should not, one should not, you know, continuously go on using it. It should be sesame, I understand that. So, you know, it should be like, you know, a rotation. I mean, in a month, suppose uh, for one week, you use this oil, then uh, uh, the other one. So uh, uh, in the process, you, nothing is, coming to you as an overdose and all the ingredients which are not, you know, particularly not available in a particular will be available to you. I think it's good to use, go for a, a mixed kind of a thing in, in intermittently and uh, yes, system oil can be used, yes. Thank you, doctor, for all the questions. We've, we've answered over, over around 20 questions uh, in this session and, you know, in, in the span of 25 minutes. So thank you very much. And for the, uh, for the, uh, you know, introductory comments that you had made. Uh, but before we go, doctor, I have to ask you this question about, since you are into, uh, into theater, etc. So what's coming up next from you? Which international production? Sir, certainly. Theaters are uh, there. Some advertisements should be there. Some films will be there. Some short films and international. I'll keep you informed, sir. <laughs> so have you, you know, have you come in any uh, uh, you, you mentioned about TV series, etc. So which television series have you come in? Yes, series, actually, I am going to do one. Series is something which mandates time. That's the main problem. See, my branch is like cardiac surgery and I, I double between pediatrics and adult both cardiac surgery. It's too tough a brand uh, so long as, you know, getting time is concerned. So uh, what I do generally is at times I, you know, do something and then I, you know, contract myself, withdraw myself. You know, it's kind of a hide and seek game. So that time, but uh, I mean, uh, suddenly, I mean, something good will come out. But doctor, I do it for my relaxation. <laughs> and it's, it's also a medium which, you know, if you can give a message to someone. Uh, but to how, your... do you, how do you, what is your view of the projection? Since you are also an, an artist, you are, in, you are obviously tracking uh, the performers. How do you see, you know, heart attacks, etc., are, are there on television? Are there on films? Dilka Dora, which 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 comes on saying, is it is it projected in the right way or is it just over dramatized? Over dramatized, certainly, certainly over dramatized. See, there are so many other things which are not being projected pertaining to the heart disease or heart attacks. But obviously, I mean, this is a medium people would uh, like it if it is you know if it is what you call that um, if it is you know mixed with masala if it is flavored. So it's not that right. I have seen a movie. I shouldn't mention the name. The name of the movie is uh, Disco Dancer. I, I'm sorry, I came to the movie also. The uh, protagonist had a liver problem, but liver is generally in the right side. It also crossed the midline and it was a little to the left side. But while he had a pain on the right side, he you know he was you know kind of pressing on his left side, which is a blunder. It should not be like that. So obviously that it's dramatized, you can say. Great. Uh, thank you, doctor. Uh, you know, it's World Heart Day on uh, August, uh, uh, on sorry, September 29th. And uh, we decided to have this session because of, uh, in, in, in advance of that. So uh, 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 greetings to you and to the various uh, heart uh, uh, specialists across the country and across the world who are there. We're doing some great work. Uh, so, uh, all the best to you for the, all the work that you're doing. And, well, thank uh, you very much. 
you know i must also tell you that on september since you are also into singing on september 28th uh, dr we also conduct uh, what is uh, what we call seniors have talent mm -hmm. and which is uh, only open to 60 plusers mm -hmm. and for the last eight seasons that is from the last over two years we've been doing these sessions where mm -hmm. over 500 um, uh, people over over the age of 60 have participated and uh, they have we've got various uh, singing superstars as we speak the eighth season is going to complete and on september 28th which is a day before world heart day something that will gladden one's heart is that we are doing a one uh, one special session with all our uh, winners across the seven seasons and we're doing a lata mangeshkar special oh we're doing a lata mangeshkar special because as we know september 28th was mm -hmm. uh, uh, is didi's birthday mm -hmm, and yeah. this is her first birthday after she passed away earlier this year so we're doing a lata mangeshkar special so those of you who are there i'm going to ask the producer to just quickly um, show the uh, show the image of this uh, lata mangeshkar uh, special it's going to be at 6 o'clock on uh, wednesday remember wednesday is the day when most seniors over here uh, were used to tuning into binaka geet mala oh. and uh, so this is a uh, we are reviving the singing tradition on on wednesdays with the seniors have talent and um, uh, that's uh, going to be there on wednesday so this is the uh, this is the image it's a tribute to lata mangeshkar 28th oh, september really at uh, at 6 pm and uh, there are uh, just a handful of of star performers if i might say that is so sweet that you are and, such uh, a such a such a noble india word oh my god that's great yeah, great i think so, so uh, doctor we have we've been doing these sessions and we have some sessions every day we would love okay. to have you uh, certainly or, certainly sir certainly sir. any such session sessions i would be there and um, uh, before i conclude i mean you are the one who is going to conclude but i must thank everyone i with my folded hand at requesting my fellow beings to to live life to the king size at the same time follow a very religiously meticulous way because my my you know my what you call quotation is don't die before your death so in a single line i would write to say that lead a heart healthy lifestyle because heart is the most preventive organ it starts functioning when we are we were in our mother's womb at the, uh, with the age of 4 weeks and it is the last i mean never takes rest every day every moment it is beating so let's take care of our heart do whatever you want whatever is giving you relaxation you are a singer saying you want to listen to songs you sing yoga medicine whatever is giving you pleasure go for that don't indulge in any any addictions so that will lead to everybody knows what it will lead to and so let's cherish life and uh, i my sincere prayers to the almighty to bless all and everybody um, i pray to god everybody should lead a um, you know healthy life prosperous life thank you very much sir and please thank you thank you very much thank you very much dr bikram mohan ji for the session and we will be back once again next saturday at uh, uh, next saturday is october 1st and we will be here with another session of health live at seniors today and as dr mohanty rightly said it will be at 5 o'clock 5 pm is our time and we will be there next saturday on october 1st uh, with another session of health live at seniors today thank you once again dr mohanty and thank you to all the people who facilitated this thank you very much right now and press the bell icon never miss an update